Hello out everybody, Hellcrex here, and welcome to another episode of Thoughts from the Inner Sphere, episode 180. And today we're going to be talking about the Thunderbolt. Yes, the Thunderbolt. That 65 ton mech is one of my favorite uh, iconic uh, heavies out there in the game, especially through the Succession Wars. I always seem to find a way to put one of these into my lineup. Uh, one of my lances as we're doing campaigns and slowly growing a company and it's like yeah, typically one of the first ones I always try to grab my hands on if I can is a Thunderbolt now the Thunderbolt we're gonna be talking about is the 7m which is the 3049 3050 era uh, mech that starts popping his head up uh, from free worlds league uh, house Merrick they produced a pretty decent mech right out out of the you know right off the assembly line with the minor tweaking it could even be better but you know that just depends on how you look at uh everything all right let's just look at this thing it's 65 tons it's a 460 doesn't have jump jets there are versions like the was it the 3s that has jump jets so if you like the 3s you probably could go that and do some tweaking on that and get some jump jets which i'm all for also now it has 15 double heat sinks which is not bad I like it uh maybe slightly over synced in a way but you know we'll just have to discuss that in a second it does have a standard fusion engine which is two thumbs up it has a ear large laser in the right arm a lrm 15 in the right torso three medium lasers in the left torso a streak two in the left torso and two machine guns in the left arm all righty so what do we think about it oh and it does have 206 points of armor ferro fiber set is so it's almost maxed out it's about half ton short so hey you almost get everything you want there so what do we think about it i like it i try if i can get my hands on one in every game i usually do uh, it's one of those mechs that can lay down some decent firepower at long range out to 21 19 21 that's when you know you get the ear large pops in there at 19 so it doesn't have any problem at extreme long range to do some damage be that it thing can run and do 19 heat and still have 11 left over so that's one of the problems with this mech it is when if you consider it that way it's over synced it has too much heat sink heat sinks uh with it now even if you throw in the medium lasers and the streak if that does fire this thing still is running cool uh it has enough to dissipate everything that comes its way the only thing that's going to happen is if you take an engine hit or get hit with a flamer or some infernal missiles or something like that that's when you're worried about the heat levels going up other than that uh, just fire away the only thing that stops this thing from uh, keep firing everything is if it runs out of ammo and that's going to take at least 16 turns for the lrm 15. now there's a few things that i would prefer on this mech not being on there uh if i had my druthers i probably would consider dropping the srm2 i I don't find much use for it and a streak too especially when you got all the other weapons on board i you know it's basically all it is is a crit a seeker out to nine hexes and personally i'd rather have two more medium lasers and worry about how to balance my heat with those and i'm pretty good at balancing heat now the other thing that i would prefer to see is like the machine guns uh this thing has a case in both torsos now if you decided to uh, dump the machine guns you only have to worry about case on one side that's where you got the lrm so you got your lrm with your missiles and your ammo on one side so you can if you drop the machine gun you can drop the case on the other side if you wanted to and that would free up basically uh two and a half tons and if you drop the srm2 there's five tons you can play with and personally 
I would be inclined to replace machine guns myself with two flamers because hey that's two tons for the machine gun and the ammo so why not I you know I prefer flamers just the fact that it's the same range does uh, the damage it, but you get uh, the capability of either heating up an enemy mech or possibly burning out infantry or anything so you got the same thing you can get with the uh, machine guns without the problem of the ammo exploding so I'd rather go with the flamers over exploding ammo any day so it's like hey what's what's your choice here I'm taking the non-explosive choice myself and uh, like I said streaks are nice but you know you're spending two and a half tons on something that does four points of damage when for if you put two tons of that towards two medium lasers uh you get 10 points of damage versus four points and you still get two crit shots you know so the only difference is is the heat so you got two heat with the streak two versus six with the medium laser but i can balance that myself so there you go now how do i usually use this thing i typically like to you know as i'm closing in i'm gonna be hammering away with that lrm and that large laser until i can get in close and then you just start tossing in the uh the medium lasers and the streak and if you get rid of the streak for more medium lasers hey you can even do some more damage now there have been many times where i look at the the situational map you know you'll say okay i got some heavy woods over here do i necessarily have to close if the enemy's coming to me unless they're clans and if clans are like hey i'm going to use my long range weapons to my benefit forcing the inner sphere to close and well obviously you're going to have to make up the distance there and start because when you're facing clans your inner sphere is better off just getting in their face and punching and kicking and eye, eye gouging so and because the clans yeah they get better as you get closer but in a way they prefer not to get too close using their uh benefit of their longer range weapons to keep you at a distance so that's why you have to move up quickly now if you're facing inner sphere and you got some good tech versus no low and low tech hey yeah it might be your benefit to actually play like the clans and keep the distance and uh use that to your advantage in a way but you know your mileage may vary now there are some different versions out there of these of this mech uh we got the 7se which i've played with before this comes out in 3067 now this one has indo steel yes indo steel and also uses ferro fiber so and double heat sinks so you're looking at something that has a gauss rifle and three medium pulse lasers and a guardian ecm in addition to that so it's saving a bunch of tonnage and when you're throwing a gauss rifle on something uh you're not going to have a lot of heat so you don't need all those heat sinks either so uh you can run that uh configuration so yeah that's where they're uh snaking up all the extra uh tonnages into that uh, primary weapon system but you know it's uh, not something to be said about throwing a big giant uh nickel steel slug down range and then we got the 9m this earthworks version came out in 367 also uh this mech uses indo steel okay 12 and a half tons of armor and uh it has a light gauss rifle Alrighty, in the right arm and it has an lrm 15 and three er medium lasers uh it's that can run you a little warmer but you know because the er's are you know obviously five heat each so that can run you up a little bit as one ton of uh um slug rounds basically gauss round you know one ton of ammo for it and then you have case in the torso and then you have uh 
they moved the basically they say they moved the cockpit to one side to the other so an interesting configuration if you like gauss like gauss rifles then we have the 9nr and this is the experimental version that came out in 3072 uh, has an active probe on board has guardian ecm has a light ppc a uh, large laser and three medium lasers er medium lasers and a streak six and it has a battle armor pods basically you know, your b pods so you can blast infantry if any and it carries a c3 slate so that is something also to think about if you have access to a c3 outfit uh be more inclined to use one of those extra t i would be more inclined to drop off a heat sink for a c3 slave especially in the version where if you run 15 to 14 uh you can manage the heat for that extra little bit of uh benefit you get from the c3 slave system so it's not a bad one uh that's where you start running into the streak six system it uh not well, I like streak sixes, but if I had my druthers by this time, it's like maybe try to get your hands on a clan streak six instead and save tons. But it uh, can be a real good crit hunter. You know, I look at it that way. Uh, then we have the uh, nine NAIS. Uh, this, you know, obviously comes from the uh, college there. The Federated Suns uh, came out in 3067, has Indo Steel and an XL engine, so yee. But uh, is increased to, what, a 5.8, has 12 tons of armor. So obviously, then it has a Rack 5 on board and a targeting computer and three ER medium lasers and a Streak 6. Hmm. So this thing can dish out a little bit of damage really quick but and it comes at the expense of that xl engine and well you got the speed with it so there you go there's give and take there but i prefer not to have the xl engine myself now if i was going to go that route maybe go with a light xl and see what you can do with that and maybe not worry about using the rack 5. Eh, not never been a fan of the rack 5 i don't know why then there's the 9s that came out in 3050 this is another one that's right into the wheelhouse of our era that we're talking about here uh this one has a er ppc in, in its right arm uh, up close it carries around an srm6 and three medium lasers and it retains uh, machine guns and carries a pair of flamers and an anti-missile system and a ton of ammo all right so uh you're looking at something that is more or less geared towards killing infantry now the anti-missile system would be good because if you're getting close they're going to try to hit you with the uh lots of like if you got srm troops trying to take you out or or even battle armor trying to hit you with all those darn uh srm shots uh anti-missile system probably will help you a little bit uh, and then you got the flamers and machine guns to start killing infantry right and left in massive droves and then you just plink away with uh, the uh, SRM so it's not a bad mech for a city fight that's the way I look at it. this one uh, if you can get your hands on one and if you prefer fighting an urban environment and you're facing a lot of infantry this is your mech and then we have there's a whole bunch of these i don't think i'm going to go through all of them but then there's a 9se and uh, this one came on in uh primary round energy weapon so it has an lrm 10 launcher for long range close ranges it carries a large pulse laser three medium lasers and has one ton of reloads for that and it has jump jets all right so this basically kind of like your 3s but with improved equipment 
So think about it that way. And so you're looking at a 464 with some decent enclosed fighting. It's another urban style mech. You know, you're mobile inside the city, getting around, displacing around from different uh, environment, uh, alleyways, streets, etc., or getting up on top of building and jumping down. And then you just have the LRM as your cursory uh, long range weapon because that large pulse only goes out to Ted. So, hey, you're looking at something that will help you in close, but at longer ranges, you're going to need some help. That's where your buddies come in. And we got the 9 Tango 9T. This came out in 3083. This has an XL engine, but it's fast. So this thing cranked up a bit for the, the speed wise. Has an LRM 10, a pair of light PPCs, and three ER medium lasers with endo steel. So you got a mech that's uh, pushing the limit when it comes to speed on this class. And it's able to get around. But, you know, it could be a little better. But, you know, you're throwing everything you got, including the kitchen sink, into getting that speed up. Uh, but you've got an XL engine, so I'm not too happy with it. But, you know, if you're going to use it, you might as well speed it up. Then you got the 10M. This comes out in 3082. Has an Indo steel chassis. All right. It relies on a PPC mounting a heavy ppc and a light ppc and a snub nose ppc on the same chassis why can't we just use the same weapon hmm. now you think about it the lrm and the srm have been replaced with an mml5 and then we have an er medium laser so and a light fusion engine all right so basically you're using a light fusion engine to get a little bit of extra tonnage without the all of the problems when it comes to the X light engine so uh, you lose a torso it's not the end of the world you're taking two engine hits but you're still ticking but I'm more inclined to say hey why can't we just have like maybe try to work it out with three snub nose PPCs or a bunch of light PPCs you know have to look at that one and see what that one, how that one works out again. It's been a while since I played with it. And then we have the 10S Dark Age one. It has a large laser, an ER PPC, and one in each arm. And it has 14 double heat sinks. All right, so it can... Let's see, that'd be 27, yeah. So you can't dissipate that. And it has three ER medium lasers. So basically when you get in close... Quit using the uh, PPC and then you can just have the ERs do lasers doing the job for you. And it has a light fusion engine, so and endo steel and case. But hmm, uh, along with the LRM 15 with two tons of ammo. So it's not bad. Uh, I can see myself using it in a pinch, you know, being that it has a light fusion engine, obviously better than an XL engine, and it does have the capability of doing some good damage while uh, moseying around. I personally may have thought about, it's like, either drop the large laser or the PPC in favor of jump jets too. So that's something to think about with that one. Then we have the 10 SE. Uh, this came out in 3067. Uh, it has endo steel. Lots of good armor. Has mass so you, you got burst speeds going on right there. So, And it has jump jets uh, so it can get around pretty good. It has an ER PPC, 3 ER medium lasers, and a target computer with an LRM-10. And it has Guardian ECM. So, obviously the Guardian ECM is going to be good for your defense. Mask, if you want to use it in one turn burst, like move, let it cool off, burst, you know, that type of deal. Uh, use it every other turn so you don't have to worry about locking up. 
And let me tell you, my luck when it comes to masks is if I use it two turns in a row, it will 100% chance of locking up on me. Never fails. Uh, luck of the draw. It's like that's one equipment system that just doesn't like me. And I don't like it because of it, I guess. Maybe it's psychological. Then the 11 SE, and we have the, uh, it came out in 3069. Uh, this one has the uh, snub nose PPC on board and has uh, uh, a MML7 with both SRM and LRM ammo. And it has three ER medium lasers and it carries around improved jump jets. All right, so it can get out there a bit. And then uh, it's locked up together with Guardian ECM and a targeting computer. So it's not a bad one. So when you get into that air and you start seeing one of these show up on your doorstep is something to pick up. Uh, you, uh, you can't go wrong. So yeah, maybe well, eh, that might be a slight uh, iffy thing for the number that you hit but it's more or less a i find it's better mmls are better as srms but you know it's kind of a harassment weapon system when it comes to the lrm version of it then we have the 17 s that came out 3070 has endo steel ferro fibrous armor so you're getting the two uh bangs for your buck there uh it has a compact engine a heavy duty gyro has an ER PPC, has four medium pulse lasers, and then 10 double heat sinks with triple strength armor. So, obviously, this thing and a Guardian ECM. So, uh, if you hit this thing right at the nine, nine heat level, you know, get it right in that sweet spot, and you get in close to somebody, you can probably kick a leg off somebody real quick or do some major damage. Uh, in the last game we played, I had a triple strength armor. Uh, mech that had an axe or a hatchet man i chopped a uh a panther completely in half with it so that thing did not know what was coming and going it's like kick a leg off and then chop at the same time so it's like having one of those perks that you're able to do that not good deal at all it looked pretty bad and then last of all we have the 60 rll and uh, this came out in 3072 it has jump jets uh, uh, just enough to get you around basically and it has ferro fibrous armor triple strength armor uh, both hands and you know, doesn't it doesn't both arms have lack of they say lack weapons but they're able to take off you know so if you trip hit that thing up then you can punch yeah it has a snub nose PPC 3R medium lasers two medium pulse lasers two small lasers and a small pulse laser 12 double heat sink so basically yeah, i'm looking at that uh with all the weapon system on board you just like you're able to easily tweak your your heat levels to make sure your weight in that uh, sweet spot and able to get in close and uh, double tap somebody with two punch heavy duty punches and uh possibly knock somebody out you know, it's like rock em, sock em robots but that's everything that comes to the thunderbolt and this might be what's wrapping up the entire 3050 year i do believe i have to take a look again but i think i've caught every mech there is and some that are in the 3050 year but not in the book so if i miss something let me know and i'll try to get it back into the the lineup real quick all right hope you guys like it like and subscribe and share with all your friends and we'll see you in the next one Elk Rex out.